again, this is Samantha with the DevOps Library. Welcome to the third episode in our Vagrant course. We're glad you found yourself here. Today we're going to go ahead and bring up our first Vagrant machine and explain the basics of editing a Vagrant file. You should already have Vagrant installed, and if you don't, go ahead and watch our previous episode on installing Vagrant. All right, let's go ahead and get started. First, we need a place to store our Vagrant machines. Because we're planning on having multiple Vagrant machines, we'll make a folder named Vagrant. Within our Vagrant folder, we'll go ahead and create a new directory for each machine we plan on bringing up. For our first VM, let's go ahead and make it an Ubuntu box. You'll need to create a folder for it, then go ahead and CD into it. Now run Vagrant init Ubuntu slash trusty64. All this command does is create a Vagrant file within the current directory with the Vagrant box configured to use Ubuntu 14.04. You're now ready to run Vagrant up. Go ahead and do that now. Vagrant will now automatically download the Ubuntu box, configure a VM, and bring it up for you. While it's downloading, let's go ahead and talk about boxes. You may be wondering where Vagrant is pulling Ubuntu from, and how we knew to use Ubuntu slash Trusty64. The answer to that is that Vagrant automatically searches HashiCorp's Atlas, which can be found at atlas.hashicorp.com slash boxes slash search. Atlas has a wide variety of boxes to choose from and you can even create and upload your own. Each box is essentially just a base image configured specifically for Vagrant. And if you're interested in creating your own boxes from scratch, we're going to go ahead and cover that in a later episode. But for now, we'll stick with our Ubuntu slash Trusty64 image. If you'd prefer to download a Windows image, just search for Server 2012. There are plenty to choose from. Okay, well it looks like Vagrant finally finished downloading the Ubuntu image and has brought up our first Vagrant machine. You now have a fully isolated Ubuntu VM that you can use for anything that you'd like. To SSH into it, all you need to run is Vagrant SSH. Go ahead and try that now. Feel free to look around, install some packages, do anything you'd like really. Once you're finished playing around, just type exit to return to the command prompt. You can always SSH back in, but what if you want to start the VM over from scratch? All you need to do is run Vagrant Destroy. Vagrant will then clean up and completely remove the VM, so that the next time you run Vagrant up, everything will be completely fresh and new. Well, that was easy. All right, now that we understand how to bring a new VM up and destroy it, let's try looking at the Vagrant file that Vagrant automatically created when we typed Vagrant init. Just open it up in any text editor. We strongly recommend Sublime Text or Notepad++. It may look daunting at first, but it's not, trust me. Go ahead and remove every line that's commented out, and you'll see what I mean. It's exactly three lines, that's it. Essentially, all we're doing right now is telling Vagrant what box we'd like to use for the VM. While each Vagrant file is actually just Ruby code, you should be able to configure nearly everything without ever needing to learn Ruby. If you do happen to know Ruby, you should feel right at home. The only thing that the Vagrant file needs for launching a VM is a box, and thankfully, once you've downloaded a box once, Vagrant will save it for future usage. You can see in our Vagrant file that our box is set to Ubuntu slash Trusty64, because that's what we passed in when we ran Vagrant init. Later on, if you decide you'd like to change the OS, this is the only line that you'll need to change. When you run Vagrant up, Vagrant will automatically check to see if there is a newer version of the boxes you're currently using. If there is, just run Vagrant Box Update to download the latest version. You can create as many Vagrant machines as you want from each box, because Vagrant only uses the box as a base image to clone from. Also, you can use boxes that aren't hosted on Atlas by specifying a URL directly to them with Vagrant Box Add. To see a list of all the boxes you currently have installed, just run Vagrant Box List. If you decide you no longer want a box on your system, just type Vagrant Box Remove, followed by the name of the box. There's so many different options when you use Vagrant. It's really cool. One of the best things about Vagrant, though, is how easy it makes it to store all of your VM configurations in version control. We recommend storing all of your Vagrant files within something like Git. That way, anyone else on the team can simply clone the repository and run Vagrant up to have exactly the same environment set up. You can go ahead and ignore the .vagrant directory within each folder as that is just used to keep track of temporary things like guest machine IDs and so on. 
Well, that's plenty to work on so far, and you've done a wonderful job. If you can't remember what VMs you have running, you can also run Vagrant Status to see a list of all the VMs. If you want to stop a VM, but not destroy it, just run Vagrant Halt, shut it down, or Vagrant Suspend to pause it. Great job so far using all three of these tutorials. In our next episode, we're going to cover provisioning the VMs automatically. Thanks so much as always for watching, and please let us know if you have any questions or comments in the comment section. See you soon. Bye-bye.